Welcome to the Mystic Access Podcast, where the magic is in learning. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this final episode of the year 2016. Yay! Yay! I'm Chris. (laughs) I'm Kim. I'm Lisa. And we're going to talk about a few things today. First thing we wanted to talk about are updates to the Fire Stick and the Amazon Echo. About a month or so ago, we did a podcast on the Fire Stick and the Fire TV and things like that. And when we did that... Yeah, we showed you guys how it worked. (laughs) Right. And when we did that podcast, you couldn't access third-party apps. Now you can, but your mileage may vary a little bit. Yeah, without a doubt. Right. Some apps are accessible. Or you could vary from one day to the next, as we're beginning to discover. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Like, for example, I have a Fire TV and a Fire Stick, and I'm trying to get Netflix to work on the Fire Stick. When I open Netflix on the Fire Stick, nothing seems to happen. I lose all speech, and there's just nothing there. On the Fire TV, actually, I have two Fire Sticks. On the one Fire Stick, I can use Netflix. I'm signed in, and it works well. On the other Fire Stick, I can't sign in at all. But they were purchased at two separate times. So I'm not sure why it is, but I can't access Netflix on that second Fire Stick. And I have one that I kind of set up in December, like the 15th or something. There was a big update, like the day after I set mine up. And I cannot use Netflix either now. Which is, but you hadn't signed into yours before. I have not, no, yes, yeah. And I don't have one, but Chris's situation with two of them just sounds like the makings of a bad joke. Like, what happens if you rub two fire sticks together? Uh, Will you have lightning or sparks or sparks or Or fire? (laughs) Yeah, or fire. Yeah, exactly. And you know, it's funny because I have a weirder situation. Well, weirder or as weird as anyway situation with mine. I love the Calm Radio app and I use it on everything that I can because it's perfectly beautifully accessible. You don't actually sign into your premium account if you have a premium account. In guest mode or whatever you want to call it, it works fine. You can listen to all the free sample channels with commercials at the lower bit rate. When you sign in, the app crashes and you cannot open it. Wow. <laughs> so in order to use it, you have to clear data and use it as a guest. So I'm not happy about that at all. That's just not cool. So I will not be using it until that is fixed. And I am going to contact support. If any of the rest of you use Calm Radio and can verify that you're having the same experience, definitely contact support about it as well. And maybe we can get that fixed because that's bizarre. <laughs> I even tried it with the voice view turned off to see if it was a voice view issue. It's not. Technology really is such a multifaceted, many-legged, monstrous thing. Sometimes it feels like that where you're trying to get everything stuffed into a box and then all the, you know, one leg pops out here and there. But the exciting thing is that it's always evolving, always changing. I opened up Twitter this morning and was reading through information. I think it's obvious that these voice assistants like Siri, the Amazon Echo, and like Google Home and Cortana, we don't want to forget Cortana, I suppose, (laughs) really are watching and listening to each other because it is apparently still being rolled out and it is apparently somewhat limited, although we had some good results testing. But the Amazon Echo has now incorporated a feature we showed you on the Google Home uh, about a month or thereabouts ago, and that is that you can now stack your questions. Yes, I will demonstrate that and I'll do it. With some dearly departed celebs who we lost this week, tragically. I still just want to cry every time I think about it. So, here we go. Who is, uh, well, it helps if I speak to her and trigger her first, doesn't it? <laughs> Alexa, who is Carrie Fisher? Carrie Frances Fisher was an American actress, writer, producer, and humorist. Alexa, is she alive? No, Carrie Fisher is not alive. Alexa. When did she die? Carrie Fisher's date of death is Tuesday, December 27, 2016. Alexa, who is her mother? Carrie Fisher's mother is Debbie Reynolds. Alexa, is she alive? 
No, Debbie Reynolds is not alive. Alexa, when did she die? Debbie Reynolds' date of death is Wednesday, December 28th, 2016. It's a sad example, y'all, but it gives you an idea. <laughs> a month ago, you couldn't do that with, the, with nope. the, the Echo. Absolutely not. No way. Speaking of Echo, we know that a lot of you got them for Christmas. And we don't know this because, like Santa, we see you when you're sleeping. We know when you're awake. Nothing so mysterious as that. We know because many of you have been ordering the Echo tutorial and our other ones, too. Apple Watch, Google products, and some Victor Reader stream, too. We had yeah, some... Stream. Yeah, I'm thinking some people might have gotten streams for Christmas or Hanukkah. So yeah. if you are a new listener, if you found us through the tutorial... Or even if you just found us through some other means, we want to welcome you and let you know that we're happy to hear your thoughts and your feedback. Absolutely. Yeah, we love it when you share with us. Feel free to email us and let us know what you think. Info at mysticaccess.com. And we've got a lot of new customers over the Christmas, Hanukkah, Yule holidays. And we're very delighted to have you all here and lots of international folks too which has been really fun ireland belgium several other places it's been loads of fun to look at those i always have a personal kick out of checking out where people are from so it's great to have you all here and of course some lovely returning folks as well we always appreciate you guys and it's loads of fun we appreciate you buying your christmas goodies and gifts from us as well as uh getting your supplementary tutorials on your new Christmas presents. Thank you very much. And looking toward the new year, if one of your goals is to learn to better use your Vario Ultra, I really hope you will consider joining me for a class. The information is out. It is up on our website. And just to give you a couple specifics, the classes start January 18th and they will run for six weeks. That's a Wednesday. And there are two of them you can choose from. There is a Wednesday class at noon Eastern. And then later that night at 9 Eastern, there is a second class. We did that to accommodate people in different time zones. Some people are more morning people. Some are more night owls. Both classes are filling up, but both of them still have space available in them. I would encourage you to go to the website and check out the class. There's a tentative outline. That is pretty much what we're going to be following. My aim is to allow the needs and the questions of the group to dictate things to some extent. When you join, you'll also have access to an email list where you can chat with and ask questions of other students in the class and I will be on there as well. You'll also get recordings of each of the classes and the cost for the six-week class is $89. So that breaks down to a little under $15 a class, and each class is going to be roughly an hour and 15 minutes. And that allows I, plenty of time for Q&A as well, which is... It does. Yeah. Yeah. I really enjoy my Vario Ultra, but I do find that there are lots of layers to it, and so my aim is to hopefully share information, helpful tips, mnemonics that I've used that help me remember some of the command structure. Just hearing you talk about mnemonics that you use just makes my little heart flutter because I'm going to be in this class as a student. <laughs> so I am terribly excited about becoming much, much more proficient on my own Vario Ultra. So in addition to helping Lisa out with some moderation duties on the class and also on the mailing list, I'll be there learning along with the rest of you guys. So please check it out if it sounds like something that interests you. Even if you are looking into possibly getting a handy dandy new braille display, this might be something that you would want to consider just as a way to see if this might be for you, better to spend $89 on a possible proficiency tutorial for something that you may get than spending uh, thousands of dollars on something and then realizing you may not actually want it. So just something to consider. I realize it's still an investment, but it really is going to be something that gives a really firm foundation to get you started with using this display so that's just another avenue or another angle that you may wish to approach this from if you are indeed trying to dip your toe in the water and find a display that might work well for you if the vario is one that you are considering 
And it's very gratifying because we have all kinds of people signed up. We have yes. students, we have professionals, we have Thinkers. retired people. Yeah all over the map, all over the spectrum. So I think this is going to be a great opportunity, not only where I can show you what I've learned, but for people to learn from one another. So very much looking forward to that. It is coming up in January. Just a heads up, the 18th is coming fast. It doesn't seem like it as we record this in 2016, (laughs) but it will certainly be here before we know it. So by all means check that out if it might be of interest. Yes, definitely. Please do. And of course, we'll have that link up in the show notes, which you can currently find at mysticaccesspodcast.com. Speaking of dot coms, just a quick little note to let you guys know that our site redesign is going along quite swimmingly. I don't know for a fact when we're going to have it done. I'm tentatively saying maybe February 1st. Not entirely sure of that. That's just an estimation date on my part. I'm kind of the mistress of the back end in terms of doing some of the more grunt work pieces of this, but it's very gratifying. I think you guys are going to be very happy with what we end up with here, and I know that the more that I finish in the back end, the happier I am. We are also having a really fabulous designer assist us with the redesign, and he's working hard and doing a great job at helping us get all the components together. So when that is ready for launch, we will be telling you guys about it. And Chris and I were speaking about this earlier. We haven't even mentioned this to Lisa yet, but one of the things that we're considering doing that would probably be a good idea, in addition to showing you guys some of the redesign when it's ready to debut on the podcast, we will have perhaps a Q&A free hour-long teleseminar if you guys would like to come and ask us any questions, if you have any concerns, you know, we were happy to address that. So better to, I think, maybe do that in a seminar format where several of you can come. And if you have any specific questions, ask away. We'll be happy to assist you. But overall, we're very excited. We think it's going to be a really terrific experience and really can't wait to show that to you guys in the very near future. In part of that redesign, the podcast audio files have been moved to a different server. So this will allow faster downloads if you're downloading or more stable streams if you're streaming. And it will also take the burden off of the main website. And the website should load faster than it has before. And of course, the new website will definitely load faster than it has. But I just wanted to bring that to your guys' attention if you noticed the podcast feed last weekend may have been doing a little bit of funky things it was because all of the links to the files were updated within the feed so it was a massive effort because each show had to be done individually and there's roughly 140 some out of them so yeah and the other thing that's going to be really nice is the podcasts are going to be branded into the main website so Mystic Access Podcast, you're still going to be able to go there for a couple years, I do believe. But what it's going to do is it's going to redirect to the main site. So if you want a podcast, if you want to place an order, if you want to check out some free goodies, and we are going to have some new free goodies going up as well. If you want to take a class, whatever you want to do, you can come to our main hub, which will be mysticaccess.com, and you'll be able to check it all out together. So we're really excited about getting all our branding in one one stop shop for you guys to check out. For now, though, just know that there are no changes you need to make. Yes. You can keep coming to mysticaccess.com or mysticaccesspodcast.com. We will be very clear when the changes happen so that you know, okay, now I do this or now I do that. But for now, we're just telling you because we're very excited about the changes. There's nothing specific that you need to do at this point. Exactly. It's just a heads up for you guys. So we just wanted to talk about some upcoming tutorials that we have on our plates here and I will start with the Samsung TV tutorial that I've been working on. I've already got a couple sections recorded. Those would be the unboxing section and the setup section and then we can go from there but that's one thing I want to get out in the first couple months of 2017. I also would like to do a ChromeVox tutorial because a lot of people are curious on ChromeVox and why would I use ChromeVox if I already have a Windows screen reader or 
even on the Mac, if I have VoiceOver on the Mac, you know, why would I use ChromeVox? And that's one of the things I wanted to tackle. If you think about it, and you have ChromeVox, and you know how to use ChromeVox, you can use a Chromebook. So if Chromebook is your thing, ChromeVox is your only option on a Chromebook, as far as screen readers go. And it's always fun to have other screen readers under your belt, if that appeals to you. And you want to become more proficient with something like Chrome, and utilize sort of a native Chrome experience then this could possibly be a really good option my first quarter of 2017 looks very 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 busy among the goodies that are coming out i promise the first thing on my list to tackle in terms of tutorials and i have a lot to tackle but in terms of tutorials the very first thing is getting the apple tv fourth gen tutorial done and out and available to you guys in addition to that, the other two that are really on my plate that I want to get done quickly are the Fire tablet tutorial and also my Internet for Screen Reader Users tutorial. So this is just going to have some really good tips. We're going to learn about headings and lists and landmarks and all sorts of cool ways that you can more easily, more quickly, more cohesively navigate your computer with the assistance of your screen reader. And I'll give you all sorts of tips and tools and tricks that should make that much easier. This will be cool for those of you who would like to do more than just error around a website. It will also be good for those of you who are transitioning to perhaps using a screen reader more regularly or full time, who are transitioning from low vision to total or something along those lines. And kind of looking forward to showing you just some really cool things that you can do that you may not realize that you can do to make your experience much faster. One of the things that I like to remind clients of, particularly clients who are transitioning to total blindness, is that you may never be able to do stuff quite as quickly as you used to, but you can do it pretty darn fast. <laughs> and that's one of the things that I want to be able to show you. It does not have to be a huge struggle to navigate. There's a lot to share about that, and I'm quite excited about getting that one done and ready for you. There's lots more to come as well. Just getting this website done. There's lots of things happening on that end that I'm doing a lot in terms of that. So there's lots happening. And I know Lisa and I are probably baking up a few new classes for you guys too. <clears throat> so lots of fun things happening there in terms of just random things that we're not going to talk about yet because we don't know about them. But we have some things in process that we're kind of structuring. We certainly are. And one thing that is in process for me that I am working on and hope to start recording very shortly, unless they make more major changes, is a tutorial on the Google Home. We're getting lots of questions after the podcast we did. You know, which is better? Which does more? Which should I get? And this is not going to be a comparison of the two. It's going to be a straight walkthrough so that if you just got a Google Home and you sat down with it for the very first time and you were starting to set it up and learn about what it could do, it would walk you through all you need to be able to use it effectively. I've really had fun getting to know this little device and comparing what it does to what the Amazon Echo does. You know, people ask me because I've commented on Twitter about both. I've said that they sit on a little table beside my bed and I think they plan world domination while I sleep. <laughs> and people are often asking, which one do I like better? That's really a hard call. And which one you will like better will depend on your particular needs. For example, if you read books, either Kindle or Audible, and you want that ability, then you definitely want an Echo. If you want certain kinds of content streamed to your device, you might want a Google Home. Yeah. And so there's lots to learn about these devices. And I've had a lot of fun and maybe gained a few gray hairs in the process of outlining this information. But I'm anxious to start recording and getting it ready so that we can get it out to you so that it is a resource if that is something you would like. One of the cool things about Google Home that I wanted to show really quickly is this. Hey, Google, tell me a Christmas joke. Santa's got a joke for you. <laughs> Who is my favorite rock and roll singer? 
Elvis Presley. Ho, 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 ho. That's right, Mama. I just love that. Every time you ask it a Christmas joke, you get Santa and the sound effects. And I'm just evil. They make me laugh every time. I mean, the jokes are horrible. But when he arrives, it sounds like Santa's taking a header straight into the snowbank. Yes. I don't know. The term little things, please little minds, probably applies here. But yeah, that just amuses me. You. No, I love it. it was, I think I heard him say, whoa, Dan. Yeah, he did. He did fall into the snowbank. It, that's that's it's what it sounded cool. like. Yeah. <laughs> Have you guys seen the Google Home commercial where the father's reading to his child about the ocean? Oh, oh yes, I think I have. I have and not. every time the father says the wake up word, mine chimes in too. It's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> and there are new things that Google Home can do. And we're going to be cheesy and teasy and not tell you Ooh. what they are. So you will have to check out the tutorial. That's but right. It has definitely made some great strides yeah you guys know i'll end up having to get one it's just a matter of time i'm the only ma holdout who has not yet gotten her google home it's only matter yeah. of time, folks. and you'll be the one getting all the bases because yeah, they have you can real, slip these bases off and add like colored accessories and fun things that like that sound like me doesn't it yes I'll kind of a little fashionista with her little bases yes yeah if you go to play.google.com you can actually Add your Google Home to your shopping cart. Uh oh, I heard it. <laughs> so did I. Yes. And then you can pick whichever base you want. Yeah, I wish you didn't automatically have to get what it's a black base that you automatically get. I wish you could just pick a colored one to begin with and say, okay, I want a blah base to go in my blah room with my blah whatever instead of having to get an extra base. Yeah, I think I have a white one actually. Did you? And I think I don't know or particularly care. How's that for a good go. attitude? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got a white Echo Dot when I got my Dot. So I, I, I just think I wanted something a little different since everything else in this house is either like, you know, a black appliance or a stainless steel, you know, something like that. So I was like, hey, well, it's a crisp white Dot. <laughs> and that kind of leads us into shopping and gifts and all of that Ooh. sort of stuff. Yeah. We just had Christmas past, and I don't know, I would be beyond surprised if technology did not find its way under our respective trees. Aww. I probably got what some might consider the least exciting techie Christmas gift. This was something I asked for. I got a Galaxy tablet. I'm kind of making a little bit of a foray back into the world of Android. I did this a few years ago with a Nexus 7 tablet. It has evolved and improved since then. I got it in part so that when I'm doing a tutorial and I'm setting up something on iOS, I can also show those of you who use Android what it looks like on Android. And I had some glitches and hiccups, but it is slowly coming along. Got a voice installed that doesn't make me want to do violent things to humanity as a whole. It's not Fred, Chris, sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> well, Fred's um, not on Android. Yeah, well, maybe Fred has more smarts than I, I don't know. We won't yeah. even go there. Yeah. It's eloquence, actually. I just got eloquence and it's very quick and snappy and it's not, my friend Google Griselda, so yeah. I'm pretty happy. Although the Samsung voice that comes with that is actually pretty nice. That's a decent one, too. One thing that does make this tablet different is that it has an actual home button, which I don't really find I use as much as I thought I would. But you know what? It's a lovely security blanket. Just knowing it's there makes my heart go all warm and fuzzy. <laughs> Plus, I have a micro SD card slot and I got my micro SD card when they were having a fantastic sale so I got a nice big 128 gigabyte one and I can put loads of books or music on that with that much storage you know that makes the use of the tablet that much more compelling to me yeah that's one of my great draws to Android that I still really love is I've only got a 64 gig in mine and we have sister tablets. We don't. We haven't figured out exactly if they're the exact same one they're supposed to be, but our startup music's a little different. And we, we can't quite figure this out yet, but 
Well, I got an update the other day, and now I have the same startup music now that you, you do. Maybe, okay. Well, I do. Okay. Yeah. Well, all right. So we probably do have this. We have twinsies. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's fun to have external storage. And that's one of the things I really like. I've actually been playing with my Android tablet more. In fact, I was playing with trying to find a voice recorder because I wanted to do some audio journaling. I thought, well, you know, I'm just going to put this on my Droid tablet and maybe upload it to my Google Drive account. And, you know, so, you know, so I was kind of playing today and, you know, it's a very pleasant experience. I am really getting back into the warm and cozy feelings that I had for Droid a couple of years ago when I first got my Droid tablet. So pretty exciting. I'm not quite there yet. I'm, yeah, I'm you, hoping you, you might get there. You, might you get know, there. <laughs> the one the one time I really felt that was I had ordered a CD on Amazon, a digital download, mm -hmm. and I could not get that thing to download for love nor money. And I brought up the Amazon app on Android and I downloaded it to my tablet, connected it to my computer yeah. and was able to see and copy the lovely music I had just ordered. This was a couple years ago, but that was definitely one of those shining moments. Yeah, I think it's fun to, at least for me, to dip my toe into some of these various OS worlds and see what I like, the pros and cons of each. So it's it, it can be very fun and very intriguing. Yeah, and really, you never know when kind of your fun hobby can turn into a lifesaver. Yeah, and that's truth. You'll get a client who says, help, help, I can't do blah. And you're like, oh, wait, I just remembered how to do that. Cool, I can help you. <laughs> Since we're on the topic of Android, I ended up getting a new but used Android phone. I ended up getting an LG V10, which is last year flagship LG model. It has 64 gigs of internal storage, an SD card slot, 5.7 inch screen fingerprint reader all that good stuff i can't remember if it's three gigs or four gigs of ram i think it's got four gigs of ram i got it refurbished for a steal i'm looking forward to actually using it again my sim card currently is a micro sim card so it won't fit in the lg because the lg takes a nano sim card so i'm going to go off to t-mobile tomorrow and either have them cut the SIM card or have them give me a new nano SIM card, which they'll probably just throw it in a SIM card cutter and there you go. It's running on Wi-Fi right now, but it's better than the blue phone that I had where I couldn't swipe for whatever reason. I had to use Explore by Touch constantly. I love the hardware on the blue phone. That's BLU. If I reset it to factory settings, I'd lose talkback and um, all that stuff. So it's it was time for a change. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how you managed that for as long as you did, but oh well, <laughs> you now have an LG, and LG is lovely. My my own Android phone is an LG, and I'm very fond of it. And now that we are off of Android, I wanted to talk about a present that I got for Christmas, and that is an OptiGrill. This is a kind of a fancy grill that has preset buttons. For example... If you wanted to cook a couple burgers, you press the power button, then you press the burger button, then you press the start button. And what it'll do is it'll preheat the grill and then it'll beep. When it beeps, you put the burger on the grill and close the lid. And then you wait. The first time it beeps, it's rare. The second time it beeps, it's medium. And the third time it beeps, it's well. So if you want rare and somebody else wants medium, you just take your burger off the grill and it beeps the first time and let the grill continue to cook theirs until it beeps again. And for those people with vision or low vision that can see colors, there's a little color knob that when it is rare, it's one color. When it's well, it's another color. And when it's medium, it's another color. So you could tell exactly what it is just by visually looking at it if you have vision. But I thought it was neat that it beeped to let you know when to do what you want with your food. And the days of overcooking or having dried meat are a thing of the past because everything that I've pulled off of this thing has been nice and juicy. It's been really, really delicious. 
So now you have a steamer for your dogs and a grill that you can monitor your meat from. So go yes. you. You've, you've done well over the last month in terms of your, your food assistive tech. <laughs> and I got nope. Henrietta Hen or whatever. Oh, well, yes. There's oh, Henrietta yeah. Hen. Or whatever so what is your is. favorite thing you've made on the OptiGrill so far? The steaks that I've had. I've made some really good steaks. See, after grill. hearing a bit of the echo uh, that we heard before the podcast started, uh, Alexa was talking about today being National Bacon Day and yes. all the things you could make. I'm thinking that bacon-wrapped shrimp on the grill would be mm. a good thing to try. Yeah. Oh, uh, there's a lobster setting on the grill. Oh, like yum. I said, these this grill has preset buttons. So one button that it has too is a frozen button. So let's go back to the burger example. If you come home from work, come home from wherever, and you want to make a burger, and your burger's in the freezer, you don't have to thaw it out. You hit the power button, then you hit the frozen button, which is a picture of a snowflake. Cute. Then you hit the burger button, and then you hit the OK button. It preheats it, and then it thaws it out. It takes a little bit longer, obviously, but it comes out to be the same whether you thaw it out or not. But you just have to remember, if it's frozen, to hit the frozen button first. So if you wanted to cook um, a sausage, there's a sausage setting. So you do the same thing. The process is exactly the same thing. Power, frozen, whatever, or power, whatever. So there's like nine buttons across the front. And they're on the handle, which is really neat. So you can operate it while it's closed. And it has a really, really nice drip tray in the front that you can't really knock out because it latches in. So it's not like a George Foreman that just sits under the grill and you can knock it. And now you have grease all over the place because you don't realize that you <laughs> moved it. Well, my technology-related Christmas gift was one I got for myself. Other than the gift I got myself, the closest thing I got to a technology-related Christmas gift was one of these really nice tea infusers that my mom got me. Uh, so that that really doesn't really count as technology. That's just like the ultimate comfort winter thing. So I'm really happy about that. Very excited. I've never had one anywhere near this nice, so I'm tickled about that. But the gift I ended up getting for myself is something I've been wanting for several months and finally found one that I wanted to invest in. And it's a Yamaha soundbar to go in front of my TV. I have like a 19-inch TV because it's just me and I don't care. According to one of my friends, it's a very sexy little TV. Although she's the only person I could think of who would refer to a TV as sexy. But it's just so little and so cute. But um, the, the, the idea of having a 19-inch TV and a 120-watt soundbar may seem a little strange to some, but... I am the music fanatic and wanted something that would be really good and I could use Bluetooth or my TV or whatever. So what I'm going to attempt to do is to get rid of my home theater system, get myself a new DVD player, preferably with Blu-ray and some more accessibility and give myself a little bit of downsizing in my living room. This is a Yamaha ATS1050R. It's really nice. I got it on Amazon refurbed for 150 bucks, <laughs> just under 150 bucks, and have been delighted with it. It's got dual subwoofers. It's over two inches tall, just over two inches tall. So it's really got a really small profile. So it's not like blocking your TV. It's got something called Clear Voice, which allows you to hear the dialogue easily and more clearly, which is great. It has base extension, if that's something that you like. And it also has an app for Android and for iOS that you can use to have a little more control over it and choose some other settings that are not available on the included remote. It also has five sound modes, movie, sports, game, music, and TV program. And these are sound modes that can make it sound a little different. And it has a digital optical cable to plug it in. So it's literally, you plug it into the wall <laughs> and you plug in your digital optical cable into it and into your television and you are done. <laughs> it also has a simulated 7.1 surround sound, which actually sounds quite good depending on what you're listening to. I really like it with classical music in particular. It sounds really great. And as I mentioned, it is 120 watts, which is just incredible. I mean, it sounds really terrific. 
and it's 35 inches across and under nine pounds. So it's not very big. It's not very obtrusive. doesn't take up a lot of space and it can be wall mounted as well. So if you don't actually want to put it under your TV or in front of your TV or what have you, then you can mount it on the wall. And I believe it has the holes in it where you can just go ahead and mount it and it's ready to go. I think you probably have to get a bracket or something to mount it on. I don't think that comes with it. I don't remember seeing it anyway. It's very easy to do. And if you want some more base, a little more kick to it, you can also plug in a subwoofer, another subwoofer to it. You've got that option as well. I will demo it for you in an upcoming podcast because I would like to share it with you guys and tell you about the remote and all that. But we're already talking a lot. and <laughs> This is this is just kind of a, a fun podcast where we share a little bit about our presence. Very excited about it. Really loving it thus far. And uh, maybe selling my Philips uh, home theater system. So stay tuned. If anyone's in the market for one, I'm going to sell it for about 200 bucks plus whatever shipping costs are. And I've got, it's 5.1. It's got a subwoofer. It's got speaker stands that I bought separately. <laughs> All that will come together. So drop me a line if you're interested and uh, we'll talk about it. It's probably going to be a month or two before I actually do it because I got to find a DVD player. It's really nice. I've had it since about 2009, but it does a really terrific job. It's only DVD, but if you're interested, by all means, let me know in advance if you'd like uh, first dibs. <laughs> and uh, I will be sure to have you be one of the first to know about it when I'm ready to find it a new loving home. Anyway, I'm terribly excited about my new sound bar. It sounds really terrific, and uh, it just... It's just a nice addition to my living room. So before we close, I just have a question for the two of you and kind of a nice way to wrap up 2016. What's your very favorite thing in terms of either MA or just in general that has happened to you this year? This is a really hard one. And if all of you were sitting here listening, you would have heard the dead silence as we contemplated this. Yes, cricket. Um, <laughs> Because it is a hard question, but it's a good one. And oddly, I would say that for me, one of the highlights this year was getting my Apple Watch. Because, I mean, I really do like it and I use it. But starting kind of from scratch, learning a brand new thing, being able to share that knowledge with those of you who have purchased and having gotten such positive feedback has really been gratifying. So it's not so much that it's about the Apple Watch. It kind of is more symbolic, I guess, because really working on and creating the tutorials has been a high point of this year. You know, just a really funny little bit of trivia about the Apple Watch tutorial. After I finished it, Someone commented that it was the first complete resource out there for people who are using voiceover with an Apple Watch. I mean, there are podcasts and things, but it was the first resource of its kind. When I heard that, I blurted out, oh my goodness, had I realized that, I don't know, maybe I would have been too just flummoxed or too intimidated to even consider doing it. So it's kind of funny how that all worked out. I had no idea and uh, have just really enjoyed the entire experience i would have to say creating and putting out the google suite of products audio tutorial which frankly i didn't think would be a good seller and it actually has been a good seller so having created the roadmap for that and putting it all together and having people purchase it and come back and say what a good tutorial or good resource that actually is I would have to say I'm quite proud of that as well. For me, it probably has to be two things. The first is the touch tutorial, which was probably the most epic thing I think I've ever done professionally in any of my past jobs. It was insane. (laughs) And uh, I'm very proud of it. I'm very proud of how it turned out. Looking back at it, I kind of pinch myself and go, how did that even come about? Oh, it's just insane the amount of work that went into that and to get emails all the time at least once or twice a week I'm getting emails someone said to me recently you know that was my bible teaching me how to to utilize the thing someone else said you just saved me by having this resource I mean that kind of thing it makes me teary and it just it just really gratifies me to know that that has been such a resource for you guys I think it's one of the craziest 
most gratifying things I've done professionally ever, just in terms of the scope of it, especially knowing that about four hours of it was recorded in one week. And I'm still not sure how I'm still here to tell you that tale, but it's true. <laughs> yeah, four hours of it, plus editing of it, plus, editing, plus daisying, yeah, plus daisying. It was done in about a week, five days. I, I think, think both of us had about... Uh, four hours of sleep maybe that entire week I'm yeah four was sure four was the magic number yeah. and four four hours of tutorial doesn't sound like that much to record in a week but you just got to take our words for this one it really is because i mean when i record a tutorial i may talk and make mistakes and say um and cough and then i sneeze you know and i've got to <laughs> edit that stuff out and then i realize ooh you know, I said step one, step two, step four, step five, and there's no <laughs> step three, you know, and you've got to go in and put that back in and then send it to others to listen to and critique and edit and say, what were you thinking? What were you smoking? You know, so it really is kind of a long process, but very gratifying. It is. It's crazy. And and when you're actually on deadline and you know that people are like waiting for you to get it finished and get it done and you've got people saying, hello, we need this tomorrow. <laughs> uh, it, it kind of puts the pressure on. And I'm very grateful for a project like that, that I work very well under pressure because otherwise I don't know how it would have gotten done. So that was certainly one highlight of my year in creating something that much and having good people around me to assist me in the co-creation of that and lots of help along the way from various sources. That was tremendous. And I think the other thing that really gratified me this year and that I really loved for multiple reasons was the classes that Lisa and I co-facilitated in July. The ability to, for one thing, for to, she and I to hang out together, I think was very fun for me because we were kind of still in the getting to know you stage. And it was the first time we really got to really have some teamwork and realized that we worked very, very well together and kind of getting to know each other more personally. And it was just, it was a fun experience for me. And we had some kinks and we had some weirdnesses that happened, but it was such a gratifying thing to meet so many of you and get to talk to you and share with you and really just have such an open, awesome group of great people sharing together and coming together. And it was just a a really nice experience and so much fun and something that I, for one, look forward to doing so much more of in 2017 and engaging with more of you on that level, because that's where I feel I'm really in my element and just something that I truly, truly love. And to know that you guys showed up over the 4th of July weekend and were enjoying what we had to share meant a lot to me. You know, Kim, you've done this the last two podcast. You've had us each go around and talk about the answer to one question or something. And I think that this is a fun tradition. And I'm sitting here scheming about fun questions that our listeners will enjoy hearing and Ooh. ways that I can possibly pull these out of my hat and put the two of you on the spot Ooh, and return the it. favor. Okay, Yay. cool. So these that. will be fun. Yay. So stay yes. tuned. All right, that'll be exciting. Yeah, definitely stay tuned, you guys. I, I enjoy being put on the spot. We can't wait to see what It won't be up. boring anyway. No, it think. definitely won't be boring. <laughs> Without a doubt. We appreciate you guys hanging out with us this year. It's been a wild, crazy ride. This has been a truly awesome year for MA, and next year I think it's going to be even better by a long shot. So just we appreciate you being with us and uh, tell your friends because we've grown astronomically this year and we have you guys to thank for that. So we're really glad you're here. Thank you everybody. And happy new year. Happy 2017. Happy new year guys. Bye. Bye. Happy new year. The preceding podcast is a presentation of Mystic Access, where the magic is in learning. To contact us, please visit www.mysticaccess.com. Call us, 
543-3323 and press 2 to reach our Mystic Access Podcast comment line. Email us at show at mysticaccesspodcast.com and follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash mysticaccess. Would you like to spread the word about our podcasts? Please tell your friends and colleagues to visit us at www.mysticaccesspodcast.com. If you enjoy what you hear on our podcasts, feel free to leave us an iTunes rating and review. We certainly appreciate those. Also, you may feel free to use our podcasts in your own RSS feed. Just be sure that all of our contact information is left intact. Thanks for spreading the word, and thanks for listening. We hope that you have enjoyed this episode.